Hello again. How's it going? Hi. Hey, this is my buddy Tony. We've been partners for a long time. And uh, as this fire agate business grows, so with other minerals. We've got some amazing stuff to look at. And Tony is an amazing artist. And so he's going to help us with some of the questions we've been getting. Uh, there are some questions about how you finish the backs and sides of stones. So it's not strictly fire agate. This time we're going to look at some other stones as an example. And then he's going to help me finish off two of my stones. All right, without further ado, let's get going. Ready? All right. And here we have some finished cabochon, some uh, Sonoran Sunrise and some UFO Chrysocolla. And these are finished. These are finished for a silversmith. And you're going to see that we've got the... 15 degree bevel around the edge and that's so that when you're uh, when you're lining up your bezel and, and pressing it down it keeps the stone locked down in your silver and I have a stone here that's got the unfinished back and I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up for you real quick this is a wild horse magnesite So I'm going to start with the flat lap, just in case we have any gouges or any uh, deep blemishes on the back of the stone. And that's going to take those out before we start applying a polish. I prefer a pretty worn-in wheel for this. It's not super aggressive, but it's still just aggressive enough. So this is actually an 80 that's just, that's just worn in real well. And it's looking like we got most of that cleaned up. I'm going to wipe the wetness off and take a closer look. It looks like we're pretty good. So now we're going to move over to the wheels. Here's an example when they're sitting on the table of a piece that's got a nice finished back. There's no wobble. The color is top and centered. Here, it sits canted at an angle got a little wobble it's not sitting very centered the back's not completely flat all right so we've hit, we've hit it on the flat lap you can see the back is actually pretty smooth and like I said that that, that, that lap is, is really worn in and this is the way I like it I try to get as much use out of it as I'm going to get here I'm on 280 and I'm just going to rub it up against the 280 wheel, trying to hit evenly all those parts on the back while I'm turning it. Not staying in any one position too long, especially on this softer material, this 280 wheel can still do a decent amount of damage. Shop towel. Take a look. It's looking pretty good, and I've got some uh, dop wax in there, but you can take that out with acetone. Now here I'm going to take off the sharp edges on the back. I'm moving on. See, it doesn't take a lot. Some of you might ask, it takes a lot more for the top than it does the back. And at this point, you're just checking for any light scratches or deep gouges that may have been left over from your previous wheels. soft material so it's really not going to take long on this stuff on an agate or a nice hard uh, Jasper Bruno 
Willow Creek, any of those porcelain ducks, it's going to take a little more effort. And again, you're just looking for anything that may have been left over from the previous wheels. And to be precise, you're going to want some off divisors. That's looking pretty good. You can do it one more quick pass. start kind of round, you know, making these roundish motions, um, kind of applying a little bit more aggressive pressure on the edge of the stone before I start gravitating towards the middle. Working not to plow the wheel. You want to keep that sharp edge on the bottom side. You should be pretty wrapped up. Now those of you who have friends and family in the medical profession, Getting your hands on these blue towels is great. So you see we have a nice 3000 polish on it now. Um, for the most part I stick to 3000 on the back unless it's requested higher up. 80% um, 80, 80 of the time it's going to be covered up with silver or gold unless somebody is a, you know has the artistic ability to cut out the back. Or I have a friend, Willa, who just dominates on putting wolf howling and beautiful stuff behind the actual setting so you go higher for something like that because it deserves it but for me if it's if it's if it's not being shown 3000 is as good as you need to get so there you have a uh, polish in the back of a cabochon we're gonna move on to uh taking these fire agates down a little bit flattening that back and then adding probably a slight, and this one is looking pretty good. This one doesn't, this side doesn't need much. A little bit on this side. So we'll go ahead and bevel these sides and uh, get them ready to be set, polish them up. All right, sitting here at the flat lap. We're going to flatten the backs, bring it over to the genie, and go ahead and give it the beveled sides and the polished sides and get this stone ready to be uh, to hit the market. So I find if you, if you get the wheel turning before you apply uh, the stone, you run less of a chance of it skipping out of your hands. And with what's left of my wheel, the most aggressive parts are towards the center and the edge. You also want to watch out when you're using your hands like this on a smaller stone. If you pinch it in between the wheel and the and the stone, it'll take a nice little chunk of skin off you. So we still have a little edge over there. Looking good. Okay, that's enough of a lip. I'm going to leave it because I'm going to round that edge anyways. 
So usually when you're working these fire agates, you're going to get that shape. You're going to get that shape ready to the uh, 220. So we're just going to start on the 280. I'm going to start off gently because you want to see how it's you want to see how it's hitting your stone, especially with these fire agates because they're they're a little more free form. They're going to be a little bit more sensitive. And what I'm doing is I'm just giving it a slight angle towards the center and towards the middle. So you're bringing the edges in on the stone. Now, you don't have to do too much. You don't have to bring the degrees in too much because you don't want to take too much off the top of the stone, and you just need enough for the bezel of your your, your mounting to, to be able to hold it in. And remember, the more you come in, the more you're losing off the top of your stone. Now this is just with fire agates, you can come in as much as you want on your traditional cabochons. That looks good enough to move on. This and I might do that for the next stone just to give you a, an idea of how that works. So it's not this small for some reason. I prefer to do it with my hands. Some people might disagree with that as it chews up your fingernails a little bit here and there. <laughs> but for the most part, I, I get by. So taking off that sharp edge on the bottom of the stone. the stone upside down and I'm just using this to make sure all of those areas are touched in between the bottom and the top of the stone before I move on to my next wheel which is really going to start the polishing process.
looking pretty good. There's a little low spot there. And this is where you have to ask yourself, um, is the, 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 the bezel going to come above that? And, uh, I think it may. Probably. Yeah. So we're just going to touch the bottom of that a little bit more. And uh, move on to the final, final polish. I don't like to do the final polish until the backs and sides are done, whether I'm doing them by hand or they get done on a machine, just in case they get scratched, I can always go back and fix it just in case. That's probably right at my limit for not using a dock. Say this normally I would fix that low spot, I just would. But since we're here on a video and we got time constraints, I'm gonna let it slide. But for the most part, I think that's a good stone. I think it turned out. Oh, yeah. I so there you have it. Yes, sir. So here we are on the second stone. Check out the back. Mark does a pretty good job by hand. Let's get that real quick. Almost. Now I'm going to dot this one with a little super glue. In my opinion, super glue works really well on certain stones and not good on other stones. Most people would find it common sense not to use it on opal or softer materials, but agate always seems to work well, Jaspers. Now when doing the super glue dot, it's not about the amount of glue you use. One of the most important things is allowing it to absorb a little tiny bit into that tip of that that dot or the, the dowel or whatever stick you're using. You're gonna I'm even gonna wipe. 
wipe a little bit of that off because you really don't want too much. And then what's key here is pressure. When you're putting it on, you want to make sure you're pressing it. That pressure is going to make sure that your stone doesn't fly off as you're working it. So I'm going to apply that steady pressure for about 10 or 15 seconds. And then that should lock it up. And then give it some time to dry. I like this stuff, Gorilla Glue Super Glue uh, Impact Tough Formula. The reason I like it actually is because once you're done with it, you got it. Your 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 dop stick is still wet. You can uh, use your razor blade and just come right in behind it. It'll slice it right off, really easy. So we're gonna give that a little bit to to dry. We'll come back here in just a minute. All right, here we are. We got it dopped up. The glue's pretty much set, and. Uh, I'm going to do this on the, the top on the smaller one because uh, my, my, my fingers don't want to deal with that. But uh, yeah, we're just going to move right on to the 280 and I'm going to go straight to those sides. Now obviously you get more control with the top. No denying that. And I'm just going to start off giving it a rough, a rough grind down just to see where all the low and high spots are. And again, this is a good one. So I'm just going to come right in and start giving it that slight angle. Some people say 50 degrees. It just has to be enough so that that bezel, whether it's on silver or gold, can grab your stone and hold it in place. If it's 45 degrees, you're going to lose your stone. Unless you glue it, of course. But then, when you glue your stone, you lose the opportunity to reset it down the road without potentially damaging it. A little bit of a low spot. Top shot, and you can see that it's just slightly moving in towards that top. Sometimes I like looking straight down on the stone because it gives you a good view along the edge all the way to that top and you can see some high spots. You'll see a high spot and you'll know that you can work that down a little bit more and that's going to help with your, uh, your bezel setting. I 
give this extra control with the DOP, it's going to make it quicker. It's going to make this process go by quicker. It's just allowed to be more precise. I have some friends who won't use the DOP at all. They will only do them by hand. Okay, take a look. Came out really good, so we're moving on. And by the time you're to these wheels, you're not so worried about losing so much material, so you can you can move a little faster. straight down on the stone. That way you can see it's angled, but not uh, uh, an aggressive angle. Uh, while the top is still wet, we're gonna come over here, grab a little razor. <laughs> and we'll do, this should just slide right in. See? Now, polish up the back. Be careful not to touch the sides.
Yep. Thank you, Tony. Absolutely.